Uh, well, uh, speaking in Harbin uh, while visiting China, uh, Putin said that uh, Russia does not at this moment have any plans to take over Kharkiv, which is, of course, obviously true. But that does not actually mean that if there's in the future a good opportunity to move forward, that Russian forces will not move forward. Uh, but right now they're in a small, slow pace of advance. They're advancing as uh, infantry units with uh, aerial support from drones and with artillery support, but without much armor at all in the field. So it's a very slow pace, and it's uh, near the border. It's closer to the border than to Kharkiv, although the, the distances there are not very long, is, uh, serious. Uh, so this is right now a kind of push, to, yes, push the Ukrainians back, and actually put pressure on the Ukrainian military on uh, Russia right now is active on several parts of the warm front, from the Black Sea to the Belarusian border, and uh, the heart of offensive is part of it. What can you tell us about uh, the situation in those areas around Kharkiv? We've just seen the visuals of, of many thousands of Ukrainians being evacuated. Um, there does seem to be, as you say, quite a lot of military action, but it's slow going. Is this just a war of attrition, ultimately? Well, it's, strategically speaking, yes, it is a war of attrition. Tactically, the Russians pushed over the border in, 20, in the end of 22. The Russian forces, which moved into Kharkiv in 22, were in the, inside the city, then retreated. They retreated to the internationally recognized border. The Ukrainians uh, didn't really establish any defenses on the border itself because they would be very vulnerable to Russian artillery attacks. So the Russians right now moved again back over the border into uh, Kharkiv Oblast, are uh, pushing the Ukrainians back, where there's a kind of mobile defense there. Uh, but the Ukrainian main defense lines are some 10 to 15 kilometers away from the border, close to Kharkiv. And thus there is going to be additional Russian push. The main battles will happen there. So right now it's uh, just, I would say, I would call this more skirmishes mm. uh, than pitched battles on the border. Putin made those comments about this only being the need for a buffer zone at this point uh, from China. Let's probe into that relationship uh, between China and Russia. How much does Putin need China at the moment? Well, Russia right now, economy, Russian trade is very much centered on China and other friendly countries. Uh, the visit to China demonstrated the close and very developed strategic partnership between Russia and China. So Russia needs China, and China needs Russia, of course, too. Uh, but China's political foreign policy goals are wider. Uh, just before this uh, hosting President Vladimir Putin, President, uh, Chinese President Xi visited Europe, visited France, and was there though he was talking about a partnership, a strategic partnership with France. So China is going to have a strategic partnership with Russia, it has, and one with France too. But Russia and France right now are bitter enemies, so China very much would want the war in Ukraine to come to some conclusion as quickly as possible because of Chinese strategic intent is to building bridges to Europe, and the, the Ukrainian war is a hindrance to that.